talking about radios. Okay. I hope so. Um, I want to say something else before I start the presentation. Number one, we're out of here at 12 o'clock. That's what we've paid for. What I'm going to need your help with, if the chair is one of the bamboo type chairs, we need them stacked up along that wall. If you're sitting in one of those, plan on taking it. The brown ones here with the nice wooden arms, uh, those uh, can stay wherever they are. Uh, the port will, whoever checks out the room next will do that. But we need to be out of here. Um, so helps with removing garbage, uh, help with getting things taken care of quickly, and I promise to stop as uh, quickly as I can here. One last thing having to do with wings. If you didn't sign up and you want wings credit, make sure you do that. If you did sign up and I can't read your, uh, your uh, email account, you're not going to get credit. <laughs> So I've gone through the list, and there's a number of people whose writing is incredibly difficult to decipher. Um, and if you think you might be one of them, go double check. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about radios here. One of the things that's happening this year, one of the things that's going on, is that uh, we have a lot of our members who are going to be going other places. And radio communications at, at North Plains, if we're a little sloppy, that's not going to hurt us a lot. But when you go to Logan, or you go to Efreda, or you go to Montague, you've got a lot of people playing and going places, people who are trying to check out club ships and go out and do some of these things. These radio communications become much, much more important. Because now our job is to communicate our intentions to all traffic in the area. Remember, Engage the brain before the push to talk switch. <laughs> one of the things that happens is the button goes down. One thing happens. When the button goes down, what happens to the frequency? You own it. Which is another way to say when the button goes down, nobody else can use it. So you need to be succinct. You need to be making sure you know what you're going to say. And that comes from practice. You know, practice out loud before you push the button. Don't push the button down and go, um, 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 you should be done by then. <laughs> so, if you're unsure about phraseology, the back of a, a, a far aim, most of you buy a far aim occasionally, even if you bought one six or seven years ago, the pilot controller glossary has not changed that much. If you don't know what kind of phrases to use, what kind of words to use, that's the place to go and get uh, an understanding. It's great as an insomnia cure. It's also on, uh, Mike, it's also online, too. Oh, yeah, it's online, but you can't read it in bed online. Well, you might. You okay. can't. I bet. <laughs> okay, uh, there's five questions that you're typically going to answer when you're making a radio call. Okay? Who am I going to, whose attention do I want? Who am I talking to? You know, Hillsborough Tower. And then who am I? Glider one, two, three. Where am I? This is one that people don't get as well as they should. <laughs> You should have a pretty good situational awareness. How far away are you? What's your location? <clears throat> That's important not only if you're talking to a tower, but if you're talking to each other. Because if you say you're at five miles, and you're at eight miles, and I'm at eight miles, but I say, oh, five miles, he's three miles ahead of me. I'm in a really, I could be in a very dangerous situation. So you, you know, we've got all these wonderful tools that uh, we're using. We need to make sure that we have some situational awareness. Now, if you're not using a GPS and you're flying from North Plains, get your sectional chart out or go online and draw some circles. Now, how far is five miles in this direction from the airport? Get yourself some education so that you can answer that question. What do I want to do or what do I intend to do? What am I planning on doing? If I call someone and just say, I'm over here and I'm thermaling, I'm not coming inbound, that's nice to know if I'm transiting that area. But if I'm coming to the airport, one of the things we talked about earlier on the reverse field, if I'm coming in low, I better tell someone I'm coming in low because I intend to enter direct uh, straight in landing to the runway nine or left because I'm low. Uh, that means that anybody in the pattern is gonna be looking for me in the wrong place. <coughs> so that's, that's the kind of information we wanna be able to share. And what do I know? Well, this is, you know, we have an ATIS. Everyone know ATIS? Airport Air Terminal Information Service. It's an automated terminal. Uh, anyway, it's a radio <laughs> that tells you what the weather is and things like that. And if you know that, you can say that. If we're at North Plains, you, what would you say you know? I have the other traffic in the pattern. 
what you know, what's giving you information is what you want to be able to put here. Okay, so this is our example, North Plains traffic. Here's an important statement. What's the difference between traffic and ops? Traffic are the other gliders. Ops is on the ground. We don't have to ask ops permission to land, and ops doesn't, shouldn't <laughs> care where we are per se, but the traffic cares. Now, this is a semantic thing. What I really want you to be thinking about is when you go to Logan or you go to Efreda, there is no ops. There is no ground. It is traffic you're talking to, and that's how you get their attention. If you use the wrong phrase, especially when we're talking about power planes, if you said uh, McMinnville Radio, McMinnville Radio is a flight service station. McMinnville Radio is not the people flying around McMinnville. So you need to make sure that you know the phrases. And what I'm trying to do here, folks, I want us to be prepared to be proper citizens of these other airports that we're going to for our safety and for the safety of others. All right, same thing. Um, Let's finish the first one. Yeah, well, this is, it's the same thing as it. So we have, we have traffic, we have the glider name, we have where we are, we have what we're planning on doing, and that we know who's out there. Again, what do we know? Same, same questions that I said before. No different. This is just an example. Yes? Do you have a suggestion for if you're up and you can't see the tail numbers of another glider, how you ask them to identify? Uh, I would say glider in the vicinity of, you know, that was what I was saying. Like like yeah, I'm over, I'm just south of the, just south of the greenhouses at 3,000 feet, I see another traffic, uh, who is that? Yeah, one of the things, there's kind of a separate kind of uh, set of radio protocols. The set radio protocols I'm talking about are to the approach of an airport. And I'm particularly concerned about that because we are beginning to expand our club, we're beginning to expand where we're going, and I want us to be functional wherever we're going. The other side is, communication, or if you will, chit-chat. And one of the things the glider guys have always been good about is chit-chat, <laughs> okay? Uh, and sometimes it's to our detriment. Now, we mentioned already today that uh, the glider frequency that we use out here, 123.3, we use that in the vicinity of North Plains. But when all of us guys go out there and go cross country, we change to 123.5. The other thing is, the practice area is 122.75. So you need to gain some facility in changing your frequencies and being comfortable with that. When you go to 122.75, like Vanessa says, it's a chatterbox. And the reason for that is we have students, we have instructors who are talking about where they are and what's going on out there in that practice area. And I'm going to tell you this, and don't freak out, but every two hours we launch 40 aircraft into the west practice area. And every two hours, we retrieve them. So at any given time, we got 40 aircraft out there who are all trying to coordinate their own safety and on that mostly, frequency. And they're mostly students. <laughs> well, they're students and instructors. They're, they're only about less than 30% are solo students. But the point is, is that they're talking to each other, and they're helping to help identify where they are. Now, sometimes the students say they're five miles from banks when they're three and a half miles. That's a different problem. They don't understand miles. But, <laughs> but the point is, is that uh, you can enhance your safety by using that frequency and participating. Now, I'm not saying hang on to it, but you, you need to know, you know, I'm wired and such and such. They have been specifically requesting that we be more proactive in that area. So if you're out there flying, if you're outside our little yellow box that Vanessa was showing you, you know, I've taken a great deal of effort to make sure the flight school knows about our little yellow box. And for the most part, we practice in that area. But when the weather's good, we start drifting towards Forest Grove, we start heading towards David Hill, and from our airport to David Hill, there's a famous little point called Turning the turning tree, yeah. <laughs> world renowned. Yeah. Okay. But the point is, is that that's a that's an active active area. Hey, Mike. Yes. Oh, hi. Those creek uh, thermaling through 2,000 climbing, they can be watching for you. And if we're novices with these landmarks that you're now mentioning, we should just do where it's 
four miles, whatever, west of the so you, airport? Banks is a good place. Forest Cove is a good place. Bales Creek is a good place. I think all of us who fly in that area know those turn points. So I have a diagram of the West Practice Area with all the identified markers. Yeah, so I have, I have a West Practice Area diagram yeah. that we have produced for the local communities. And I'll get a handful and I'll put it out. That's a great idea. I'll put it out on the, uh, in our... If you could upload it to the documents, follow me very good. Uh, if I, yeah, I can put it up on documents too. Okay. Thanks. Uh, no more examples here. Uh, so, as you're approaching an airport, there's a sequence that is suggested in the AIM, which is as you're about seven to ten miles out, get the information about the airport, make your initial traffic call, tell them how you intend to enter the pattern, and stay on that frequency. So you can listen to who's there. Now, we're talking to students uh, in, in my business, and they're very good about this. They, we, you know, we, we beat this into them pretty well. And, uh, but the problem is, uh, even though we go to airports like McMinnville or Scappoose or, or Aurora, uh, there's a high volume of traffic, relatively high volume of traffic, even in the power world, that uh, doesn't use the radio. <laughs> so never assume that just because nobody's talking to you, there's nobody there. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to talk about ATIS. Uh, we don't really need to cover that today. Uh, airport advisory. Um, one of the things that always frustrates me is people look at their uh, sectional chart and they read the air airport information uh, block and it says the last little number and they say, oh, that's the common traffic advisory frequency. No, that's the Unicom frequency, which may be the common traffic advisory frequency. And one of the things to understand is that the phrase Unicom, uni meaning one, is a one-point contact and is a ground-based frequency by definition. It should be an FBO who's there to offer services to a pilot. Now, they may or may not be there when you come by. But if I want an airport advisory, and by the way, when we get over to Logan, in addition to an ASOS, they have an airport advisory capability from the FBO. The FBO says, oh, you know, Glider traffic in the area. That may not go, that's not going to show up on the, uh, on the ASOS at a non-towered airport. Okay, you can find out where the wind is, where the runway, which runway is used, what the recent traffic is, other information may or may not be given to you. Okay, our pattern, according to the AIM, is right traffic unless otherwise specified. Cross midfield, if you're on the wrong side, announce, announce, announce. Tell them what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Left is standard unless otherwise specified. Left is standard for power traffic. Okay. Right is standard for gliders. Okay. So right is standard for gliders unless, uh, unless for some reason there's a, a, a specific clarity why that would be. Always look to merge with other traffic. Remember, what's Big R? Who remembers what Big R is besides the instructors? It's the priority of air traffic. Balloons, gliders, airplanes, rotorcraft. Who has right of way? The answer is, if there isn't a balloon around, it's probably you. So if there's somebody that's going to get in your way and they're in a power plane, say, I am a glider. I need priority. Because uh, they can go around. You can't. I keep telling my students, that's why we can land so well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is an extension of some of the things that we've already <laughs> talked about. When you get on the ground, get off the runway. Keep the radio on. Exit the glider. Tell them, tell everyone, I'm on the ground, I'm moving the glider. Move the glider off the runway. Keep the radio on. To announce that you're clear of the runway. And remain <coughs> clear of the runway behind the whole line if there is one. And turn off the radio only after you are clear of all <coughs> movement areas because otherwise you want to pay attention to who's coming into this airport. You may end up having to help another glider that just landed. Okay, practice your radio calls. If you want someone to practice with, you can call me. You can call me. <laughs> and I'll be happy to help you. Uh, one of the things I do every day is I simulate air traffic control because my students, we don't want to bug air traffic control. So they call me and they say, okay, Today you're the flight service station. Okay, I'm the flight service station. Go ahead. Uh, so I can help you practice and get some, some pointers. I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, as you approach, 
Do our planes when you're driving out to fly. You know, just start thinking about it. Okay, I'm five miles from North Plains, inbound for for a fun day of flying. You know, uh, just get the idea of uh, engaging your mouth and do it out loud. One of the biggest problems is is that people go, oh, I can think very clearly, but I can't speak as clearly. Okay, so get your mouth working. You know, uh, while you're driving your car, get your push to talk there on the steering wheel and say, you know, Hills, uh, North Plains area traffic, glider one, two, three, inbound, whatever. Just practice it, get that, get that uh, motor memory working. Okay, uh, already stated, clearing the runway is the number one task <coughs> after landing. Always, 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 doesn't matter which airport we're at, North Plains counts. And we've said that several times today. Now I'm gonna tell a bad story on myself if I have a moment to do it. <laughs> okay, I don't have time to tell it. You'll have to ask me about it later. Give us the punchline. Well, uh, the punchline is that uh, I pulled out on a runway at an uncontrolled airport without making a radio call. And I was uh, severely reprimanded by a member of our club and, uh, and humbly accepted the beating. Thank you very much because it was obvious. What am I thinking? What, what kind of stupid thing am I doing? One of the things that happens, and the reason for this presentation, we are not going to be flying at Hills at North Plains. We're going to a new place. And we have to work that new place appropriately. So we don't just drag our glider where we want to put it. We don't just move it down the runway where we want to. There's going to have to be, you just have to be aware that things are very different away from our glider port. And that was the recognition that I didn't have, is I acted like I was at North Plains. When I was yes, sir. One one thing. If you're going to Ephrata on the camp out this year and you have never been there before, I'm heading it up for this club. If you are going to fly there, the club there has requested that you see me, if you've never been there, for an airport familiarization and radio procedures. Okay? So contact me. Okay, I want to do one more thing here, really, really quick. First of all, there's a ton of people here whose faces I don't recognize. Now, I'm not going to say let's all, let's all say hi to each other. But what I want to first do is by a raise of hands, who are just in the club for a year or two or less? Okay. All right. Put your hands down. How many have been here for five years? Okay. How many have been here for 10 years? You can keep your hands up. Okay. How many of you have been here for 15 years? 15, getting close, 20 years. Okay, I want you to look around at the people who've been here for 20 years, and my hand is up. When we came into this club 20 years ago, the club membership was 40 to 50 people a year. We're double that. Okay. So as you think about the activities in the club, you can appreciate the fact that some of us who've been here a long time, we've been to these meetings for 25 years. We still come to these meetings and we still participate, and uh, I appreciate all of you being here today. When Any did questions? You stop on the 20? Excuse me. I think you're going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> How many years? 30. 30. 30. Good. Well, Eric passed away, so you can't keep that record. Yeah. Okay. 40. 40. Okay. So we got we got some people who've been here a long time. Who wants to be 40? Anybody beat 40? No, Tom's. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Brown can beat 40. He's been here. Mr. Brown has been here a long time. Okay, folks. I hope you. Uh, any questions? Yeah, what question, Mr. Could you remind everyone that, that the time to be familiar with your radio and how to use it is not while you're flying into another airport's airspace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that don't have a photo yet, you need to be over here. <laughs> <laughs>